Hello class and welcome to our chapter 12 review. This is the last chapter in the book so let's finish off strong. So for this first one we're going to be trying to find the median and the range. I'm going to give us some options. So first our median could be 0, 2, or 3. Let's look at this. So what we're looking at first of all this is called a line plot or a dot plot. This is not to be confused with a line graph. So when typing, one must specify that it is. They have the chart here and it's already been filled out for us. The way that we fill it out is you just put an X and or a dot or whatever above the number, the corresponding frequency of times we see that number. So for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight dots here. One, two, three, four, so I have four dots there. One, two, so I have two dots here. One, so I have one dot there. So let's look at the median. So a lot of you guys are saying three. So I'm looking at that. Now, here it is, if it was three. What do we think about that? Do we think this looks right, that this is the middle of our data, that equal amounts of data are on either side? No, exactly. Equal amounts are not on either side. On this side, I have 14 pieces of data and this side I have one. That's not equal. Just because it's the middle of our line, because it's the middle we go from zero to six, does not make it our median. My line could extend and I could have more line going seven, eight, and that does not make my median four. So we already know it's not three. The way we find median is we cross off in ordered set from smallest to biggest, and we eliminate the answers as we go. So let's see, I'm gonna cross them off. Biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest. And I'm left with that plot point, which is above zero, meaning my median is zero. So then I asked you guys to find the range. So I'm getting a lot of sixes, awesome. So why is it six? It's six because that's the biggest number I have, right? No, exactly. So to find the range, it's our biggest number minus our smallest number. In this case, it just happens to be zero. So six minus zero is six. So my range is six. Not just because it's the biggest number, but just because that's how it worked out. Let's look at this one here, median and range. Again, if we were gonna find the median, we cross things off until we get both in the, until we get in the center. Smallest, biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest, biggest, I know it's annoying. Smallest, biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest, and I can already see where I'm going here. Biggest, smallest, and at this point, it doesn't even matter because the only points left are 72. So my median is, 72. Let's think about the range here. So what is the range? Excellent. You guys gave me the range of nine, which is correct because it's our biggest plot point minus our smallest plot point. But what if I did this to my graph? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna add a 77. I'm gonna add a 78. Here I'm gonna add a 66 and a 65. What's my new range? So I'm getting some 13s and I'm getting some 9s still. So let's think. Why is it one of those? Let's see. So yes, when we're doing this, I can see what we were doing. Someone did 78 minus 65 and they got 13. The other ones of you were still doing that 66 or 76 minus 67 and getting 9. Those who got nine are still correct because we don't care about how far our line goes. Remember, just like on that last one, our lines go on forever. We only care about plot points. Our biggest plot point is at 76 and our smallest is at 67. So would that change? So our range is nine. Our new range is nine. What about this though? What if I put a data point there? Did my range change? Yes, because I have a new smallest point. What if I put a point here? 
No, point here. No, point here. Yes, point here. No, because I only care about the biggest and smallest data points. So if none of that changes between, then I wouldn't get a new range. So with us having our normal numbers without any intruders, our range is nine and our median is 72. So for this one, we have this line plot and I made a nice line plot for us. So we're going to find our median our Q1, our Q3, and our IQR. If you need a refresher on the Q1, Q3, IQR, go back and look at the uh, at an earlier lesson uh, from chapter 11. So go have a look in chapter 11. Now our median. Once again, we want to cross off and find. So biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest. Oh look, it's eight. It'd be the same as if I did it in my ordered set. Smallest, biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest, biggest, eight. Excellent. So I find out that my median is eight. So I'm going to circle that one right there. Now I've got to find my Q1 and Q3. When doing that, I care about these numbers for my Q3 and these numbers for my Q1. I like to think about it as this is our 20 week report card. Here's when we graduate. 40 week. Here's when we start zero. So we need that 10 and we need that technically 30 week report card. So we got to find the median of these numbers right here. So the median easy cross off cross off. Oh look Q1 is five other side cross off cross off. Oh look Q3 is eight. Excellent. So I've now got my median my Q1 and my Q3 got to find my IQR. Just thinking about that IQR, inner quartile range. Range means biggest minus smallest. I've got quartile. So maybe it's our quartiles. So yes, Q3 minus Q1 or 8 minus 5, which means our IQR is 3. Histograms look like something. What do histograms have to look like? Yes, they look like bar graphs, but they're not bar graphs. They're like a special type. Bar graphs are kind of a type of histogram more or less. So each must have numbers on both axes, which means we can't have an axis that's got one, two, and an axis that has red, orange, yellow, stuff like that. That is not a histogram. That would be a bar graph. And then lastly, each bar graph must have, or each bar in our graph must have the same what. So I see someone saying uh, width, which that's actually kind of correct. Yeah, because we do need them to have the same width, which entails, yes, that they have the same range. So by that, each bar needs to have an equal amount of number choices. So looking at this one, is this one a histogram? So I'm getting some yeses and some noes. Let's see, from 15.5 to 20.5, that's a difference of five. From 20.5 to 25.5, another difference of five. A difference of five, five. And if you're having a hard time looking at it with the point fives, since they're all point fives, I just might find it easier to get rid of these like that. Can't obviously do that in real life, but just to make our data easier to see. Look at that. Excellent. So we see 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a histogram. What about this one? So I'm getting a lot of yeses for this one. Why is this a histogram? So you guys are saying that same thing, that 20 to 24, that's got the same amount as 25 to 29, the same amount. Oh, but look, I got some no's here. Why is it no? Yes, I get these people who got it correct. Yes, because of these two bars right there. This is the bar for under 20 and this is the bar for 50 plus. Those do not fall into the same range as the other ones. Those do not fall into the same range as having four points between them. So they do not fall into it, which means that even though this looks like a histogram, it is not. 
It is almost, but it is not. So let's look at this one. We got heightened waves. I want to make this one a box plot. So I'm going to make this one a box plot. The easiest way we need to do is we need all of these information. We need the upper extreme. We need our lower extreme. We need our median, our Q1, Q3, and technically our IQR. So I set up all of our data. Now I'm looking at this and it's nice. I have 15 pieces of data. You'll come to appreciate data sets of 15 and seven and other ones too, but man, those are good. Trust me, you'll come to appreciate this. But let's find our upper extreme. Our upper extreme just means our biggest number. So our biggest data point that we have is 81. And our lowest data point we have is 40. Excellent. When I plot those on a chart, I literally just put a dot where 81 is and a dot where 40 is. Awesome. We're good. Let's find our median. So I'm going to go cross, cross. I just don't want to cross them off really. Cross, 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 cross. Oh, I'm left with 67 in the middle. So my median is 67. So again, I'm going to put a dot over that 67 mark that I've got right there. Once again, when I'm looking for Q1, I care about that set. When I'm looking for Q3, I care about this set. So now I'm going to find the median between those numbers. So let's see. I'm going to cross, 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 cross median. So my Q1 is 55. Cross, 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 77. The reason that you'll come to appreciate data with sets of 7, sets of 15, sets like that, is because when finding the median, you automatically get a number. You don't have to do anything else. When we've got different data points, when we have a sets with even amount of data, we get two medians and we have to find the mean of those medians. Again, look back at your book if you're having trouble with that. Look back at our previous lessons. The IQR, that's the range between the two of them. That's 22. So I'm going to put my, uh, my points though. So my Q1 is at 55. Awesome. There it is. My Q3 is at 77. Oh, there it is. And then I'm going to connect those. So my IQR, I'm going to draw a box around my Q1, my Q3, and my IQR. Essentially, if I was drawing my box plot here, it would be like that. So let's look. Awesome. I have my box. And then I just draw some whiskers, those two lines, connecting right here, my Q1. to my lower extreme and my Q3 to my upper extreme. Here's one that's already been given to us. So let's figure it out. Our median. Yes, it's 29. So we see that median right there hitting that 29. Our Q1, that's going to be the lower left part of the box. So that's right here. That is 22. Yes. What about Q3? Yes, that's 32. So we see that right there going up 32. Then our upper extreme, we just draw our line, is 36. And our lower extreme is 15. It's as easy as that. You're just kind of looking at numbers and seeing if they match. Here's what we're going to think about. Is this set of data symmetrical? You guys should all know what symmetrical means because of that whole TikTok thing going around. You know whether or not faces are symmetrical. You're making those symmetrical faces. So you guys should all know this. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of you guys. I'm getting a lot of yes and no's, but I see a lot more no's, which is correct. This data is not symmetric. It is not symmetrical data because 50% of our data is here and 50% of our data is there. Not symmetric. We look at our median. What about this one? Is this symmetric? Yes, it's really easy to see that if I split it in half right at the median, that it reflects, it's mirrored on either side. What about this one? No, it is not symmetric. And if we did this, here are some clusters, here's a gap, we see all of that. What about this one? 
No, it is not symmetric. And then let's think. There's something called skewed. Is this skewed to the left or to the right? Yes, all of you guys got it. It's skewed to the right. What that means is our data is more spread out on the right hand side. So I like to think spread skewed, right? So I think spread is skewed. For the last thing, a good practice problem for you, hint, 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 would be to do number four A through E on page 906. You do not have to do that explain portion, but do number four on page 906, A through E. Excellent. I look forward to seeing all the high scores on the chapter 12 test.